What's up guys, Key Michael here, and it is getting harder and harder to film these episodes. Literally entire teams are going into quarantine left and right. New laws are going into effect, curfews, travel bans in France and in Italy, and it kind of looks like lockdown. Round two is starting here in Europe, so we're gonna have to get a bit creative if we wanna keep these Volleyball episodes going. But nevertheless, that's exactly what we've done this week. <laughs> I was in Cuneo to meet up with my friend Olga Stranzali. She has played in France and Poland, and now she's found herself on an awesome team here in Cuneo, Italy. And we spoke about two weeks ago, I guess, originally when I had wanted to come and film with her, and their entire time, the their entire team at the time was on lockdown for turns out to be 21 days for having tested positive. So originally we thought, okay, no, we're not gonna do it. And then I went to Chieri, as you guys know, and to Novara. And my next stop was gonna be Mondovi, which is about 40 minutes from Cuneo. And eh, then their team went into full lockdown. So luckily, right simultaneously, at the same time, simultaneously at the same time, <laughs> Olga's team came out of quarantine. So it just so happened that I'm, as I was staying here in Mondovi, 40 minutes from Cuneo, Cuneo uh, we made it, we made it work. Episode 10 came to fruition, <laughs> thanks to Olga. And we had to tweak the episode a little bit because we didn't think it was a good idea for me to go into her apartment, having just been cleared negative. I don't know enough about the virus to rule out that there might still be COVID in her apartment. So we just decided eh, that's probably a bad idea. So we kept our distance, wore our masks, and I didn't go, I didn't get to show you guys into her apartment, which I'm so sorry about, but we did get to see their first day back at training after 21 days of rest. And according to the cardio, it looked like it might've been pretty rough. <laughs> we also got to see the town of Cuneo where Olga lives and we got her on the podcast so we could talk about all things professional volleyball. Most importantly, the fact that she's a cane. <laughs> We got skates over here. I'm not even gonna talk about when I graduated, but it was a long time ago. <laughs> we talked about her style and her fashion, getting creative and making her first TikTok, and also how she manages to stay self-confident in any situation. It was a great episode. I highly recommend you check it out. And here is a little sneak peek of the conversation. I'm a kind of player that's like, um, I'm pretty stable. Maybe I'm not like the more physical or the, the most physical or the most um, talented, but I feel like I, if I do one mistake, the next ball is going to be okay, you know? Like I know how to handle things. Yeah. Um, so I trust myself a lot, let's yeah. say. Okay. Yeah, okay. I feel like um, I know what I can do and uh, when to do it. Of course, everybody makes mistakes, but I think that if I make one mistake, then the next ball, I know how to handle it better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I never doubt myself. Never doubt yourself. <gasps> That's a good wow, thing. Wow, that I is know. great. I know. <laughs> You're like, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, you know, I admire myself, myself sometimes. Yeah. I recognize the good things in myself and um, yeah, and <laughs> that's a good it, thing about me. Is this something that has always been the case? You've always just felt this no, self-confidence or did not. you work on it and... No, you just, uh, life experiences just give you this confidence, I think. Yeah. Um, when I was younger, of course, like I was so scared of a lot of things. Um, yeah. I was not trusting myself that much, but um, once you do something and you succeed, like then you're gonna be much more comfortable with everything. Yeah. It's funny though, because I feel like even in some moments, even after 10 years playing pro or having, you know, gone and played in the States or played in Italy or played in the Olympics, like even there were still moments where I would get on the court and I would think, I'm not good enough. I don't oh. deserve to be here. I'm not. I, I know that's feeling. But I mean, that's incredible that you found a way to work through that or get over that because I think it, it affects so many players at the highest of levels. If you do have a secret, a secret sauce that you can share, <laughs> I will. No, really, just learn from the mistakes. Um, I feel like I'm gonna get to that point again when something bad will happen and I'm not gonna know what to do. Uh, but I know how to handle it. I know how to not stress myself with um, bad thoughts. Okay, so, so you work on what you tell yourself yeah. in the moment. You're making sure you're telling yourself For example, like, positive things. If I miss a serve, I know what I did wrong. So in the next the next time I, I will correct the, the mistake I made. 
you know, like yeah. it's more like technique, but fine. Okay, so <laughs> you take the emotion out of it a little bit. Yes. You, you're not, that's a really good way of looking at it. Just the, like trying to see the basics, like starting from zero again and going yeah. step by step. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, because sometimes I think we're really critical on ourselves that we wouldn't be on somebody else. Yeah. Like I wouldn't look back at that girl and go, oh, I can't believe she missed that serve. But I would say that to myself. Yeah. You know, so maybe in, uh, if, if I understand correctly, you you take the sort of emotional level out of it. You're not more uh, critical on yourself than yeah. you would be on anyone else on the team. So Olga was such a sweetheart to sit down with me. It was like 9 p.m. after a really long day for her. She had had blood tests and her first day back at training and cardio and weights and it was, it was a lot. So thank you so much to her for sitting down. As always, you guys know you can check out the full podcast on Spotify or iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And thank you so much to the staff and the players of Cuneo for making me feel welcome in their little volleyball bubble. It seemed like they were a bit hesitant at first. Like, what are you doing here? Why do you want to come and hang out with a bunch of girls that have just been cleared negative of COVID? But did it for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the life of a professional volleyball player in Cuneo. Make sure you subscribe if you want to follow along and let me know in the comments who is the next player you want me to go visit, COVID permitting, and like this video if you liked it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cha-cha!